a very good morning children i am lakshmi narayana gunta pgt zoology and neet super 60 zoology faculty at super 60 dupalwalsa srikakulam in our previous session we have discussed the male reproductive system and today we are going to discuss the female reproductive system the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries accessory ducts accessory glands and the external genitalia let us discuss all these things one by one a pair of ovaries ovaries are the female primary sex organs almond shaped structures measuring about 2 to 4 cm length and 1.5 cm breadth and 1 cm thickness these ovaries they are present one on each side of the lower abdominal wall here you can clearly observe the ovaries exact location here this is a ovary and this one is a ovary and these ovaries they are attached to the abdominal wall by a specialized structure called as mesovarium it is a peritoneal layer with which the ovaries they are attached to the abdominal wall a woman or a female she releases generally one ovum per one month okay a woman is born with approximately 4 lakh immature eggs called as follicles here you can clearly observe these follicles and each follicle contains egg is called as oocyte and a female during her lifetime she produces she releases 400 to 500 fully matured eggs the follicles in the ovaries they produce the female sex hormone called as estrogen and progesterone these hormones they prepare the uterus for implantation of the fertilized eggs here you can clearly observe the fertilized egg it moves from this fallopian tube coming back to the accessory ducts accessory ducts includes ovary ducts uterus and the vagina let us discuss all these things ovary ducts let us first discuss the ovary ducts these ovary ducts they are also called as fallopian tubes or uterine tubes these ovary ducts they are also called as fallopian tubes or uterine tubes they are extended from the ovary to the uterus extended from the ovary to the uterus here you can clearly observe the fallopian tubes these tubes they are called as fallopian tubes these are the fallopian tubes fallopian tubes these fallopian tubes they are the sites of fertilization they are the sites of fertilization and these fallopian tubes they are attached with the abdominal cavity with mesosalpings attached with the abdominal cavity with mesosalpings we already told you that the the ovaries they are attached with the abdominal cavity with a peritoneal layer called as mesovarium here the fallopian tubes they are attached with mesosalpings meso salpings here you can clearly observe the fallopian tube it is a fallopian tube from here it, it this fallopian tube it connects the ovaries ovary with the uterus ovary with the uterus this is uterus and this is a fallopian tube this fallopian tube it connects the ovary with the uterus okay and this fallopian tube is divided into three regions the infundibulum and the ampulla and the isthmus this is the the funnel shaped structure here you can clearly observe the funnel shaped structure is called as the infundibulum and the middle layer wider part is called as the ampulla and the narrower part narrower part is called as the isthmus these finger like projections are called as fimbriae fimbriae these fimbriae they are essential for collecting a ovum after ovulation here you can clearly observe this is a ovary and these fimbriae finger like projections they collect the, the eggs released from the ovary the fertilized egg it takes approximately 6 to 10 days to travel through the fallopian tube to implant into the uterine lining here you can clearly observe the day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 and day 7 day 8 9 by the 
seventh day fertilized egg it attaches with the uterus and the next accessory duct is uterus uterus is also called as a womb referred to as the womb and here you can clearly observe the uterus the uterus is a pear shaped inverted pear shaped organ in the size of a clenched fist in the size of a clenched fist uterus it is made up of three layers the innermost layer is called as endometrium the middle layer is called as myometrium and the outermost layer is called as the perimetrium here you can clearly observe the innermost layer is called as the endometrium the middle muscular layer thick layer is called as the myometrium and the outermost layer which is a thin layer it is called as perimetrium peri means on all the sides and this uterus it is connected with the abdominal valve with a structure with a layer called as mesometrium ovaries they are connected with the abdominal cavity with the help of mesovarium fallopian tubes they are attached with the abdominal cavity with the help of mesosalpinx and this uterus it is connected with the abdominal cavity with a layer called as mesometrium here you can clearly observe all the three layers okay uterus it contains consists of blood enriched tissue called as endometrium this endometrium it undergoes periodical changes during menstrual cycle here you can clearly observe this is the endometrium layer which is richly supplied with blood vessels and this endometrium it undergoes periodical changes during menstrual cycle okay coming to the the powerful muscles of the uterus expand to accommodate a growing fetus and push it through the birth canal this layer which is called as myometrium myometrium the middle layer which is a powerful muscle which is the powerful muscles of the uterus they expand to accommodate the growing fetus and also push it through the birth canal birth canal is the cervical canal and the vagina together called as the birth canal and here you can see the cervical canal plus vagina and vagina together called as the birth canal here you can clearly observe this is the growing embryo and this one is the fallopian tube and this the muscles of this uterus they help in expanding and accommodating the growing fetus and also to push the completely grown fetus through the birth canal this is birth canal this one is the cervical canal and this one is vagina okay coming to the next accessory duct that is vagina the vagina connects the cervix to the external genitalis the external genitalis and here you can clearly observe vagina this one is vagina it connects the cervix to the external genitalia here you can clearly observe this one is the vagina it present between the bladder and the rectum it is present in between the this vagina is present in between the bladder urinary bladder and the rectum okay this one is vagina this vagina it connects the uterus this one is uterus uterus with the external genitalia this one is external genitalia okay the functions of the vagina includes it acts as a passage way for the menstrual flow passage way the menstrual flow and the uterine secretions to pass down it helps in the uterine secretions to pass down through the introitus introitus as and it also acts as a birth canal during the labor birth canal i have already told you it is formed with the cervical canal and the vagina here you can clearly observe it is the cervical canal and this one is vagina they together form a birth canal with the help of two bartholin glands there are two bartholin glands which are also called as greater vestibular glands this with the help of these greater vestibular glands or bartholin glands the vagina it becomes lubricated during sexual intercourse during sexual intercourse okay next let us go to the accessory glands there are three accessory glands which are the bartholin glands they are pair structures and skin's glands they are also pair structures and the 
mammary glands okay let us discuss one by one the bartholin glands the bartholin glands which are also called as greater vestibular glands greater vestibular glands they are p sized in p sized a small p sized located slightly posterior and to the left and right of the opening of the vagina opening of the vagina here you can clearly observe this is this is the vagina and this one the vaginal orifice and this one is urethral orifice here you can clearly observe the bartholin glands are greater vestibular glands these are the skin's glands other glands okay this one is bartholin glands these bartholin glands they secrete mucus to lubricate the vagina in order to make the sexual intercourse a smooth one the bartholin glands they secrete mucus to lubricate the vagina these bartholin glands they are considered to be homologous to the bulbo urethral glands in males I, i have already told you that the bulbo urethral glands which are present at the beginning of the penis at the base of the penis whenever sexual thoughts arise in human males these bulbo urethral glands they secrete viscous substance and the similar thing we can see we can observe here in female reproductive system that is the greater vestibular glands are bartholin glands these bartholin glands are greater vestibular glands they release mucus which lubricate the vagina the next type of glands are mammary glands mammary glands these are pyramid structures and each breast has 15 to 25 mammary lobes 15 to 25 mammary lobes each lobe with a group of cells called as alveoli alveoli are a group of cells which are helpful in the production of milk here you can clearly observe the mammary glands e- each one is a lobe this one is a lobe and this one is a also a lobe all these are lobes okay each lobe with a group of cells these are a group of cells here clearly observe this group of cells they are helpful in secretion of milk after the milk is secreted by these alveoli the milk is sent into the lumen of the alveoli from there it opens into the mammary tubules from there these mammary tubules join to form a mammary duct a mammary duct and these mammary ducts they form an ampulla and this ampulla finally they unite to form a lactiferous duct this lactiferous duct it opens out through a nipple a nipple okay coming to the next one external genitalia this external genitalia it includes the vulva vulva is the female private region female private region which consists of the mons pubis here mons pubis labia majora labia minora clitoris urethral opening vaginal opening and the perineum okay these all includes the vulva vulva okay this one is mons pubis the mons pubis triangular mound of fatty tissue is called as mons pubis where the pubic hair grows pubic hair grows and below this uh, the labia majora labia majora this one is also called as outer lip this one is also called as the outer lip outer lip and labia minora a pair of labia minora it is called as the inner lip and the clitoris which is equivalent to the penis of human males the clitoris it is uh, an organ of sexual arousal and this one is urethral opening the upper opening is called as the urethral opening and the lower opening is called as the vaginal opening or vaginal orifice this urethral opening is also called as urethral orifice and uh, vaginal orifice and this ure- this is urethra this urethra leads into urethral orifice and the vagina opens out through a co- opening called as vaginal orifice and perineum is the structure that is present in between the anus and the vestibule okay let us finish this session with a few questions what are the glands of females which are similar to the prostate of males bartholin glands skin's glands cowper's glands greater vestibular glands what is your option glands of females similar to the prostate of males prostate of males is okay that's right 
the option b is right answer okay next question the fimbria of infundibulum involve in collection of zygote collection of sperms collection of ova and collection of progesterone the fimbria of infundibulum fimbria the finger like projections which are present at the funnel like structure what is the right option the collection of vava very good collection of vava they are helpful in collection of vava okay this finishes our session and thank you for watching just you follow me on youtube simply by typing lakshminarayana gunta thank you